YouTube Nation, Midfin TV, aka Me TV, aka Don't Front. You know I got you open, but that's not the point. All right, we need to talk about sports today, and I'm trying to do this before I go out and go play basketball. So I'm trying to upload this before instead of after. We'll see what happens. But let's get into today's show because I want to say big shout out to the U.S. Army. That's right. For those who don't know, on Saturday they invited me to watch Cotto vs. Margarito, and so that's what we're gonna start off with. All right, that's exactly what we're gonna start off with. So let's get started. All right, first off the undercard. We have Mike Machine Gun Jones, Philly's own Mike Machine Gun Jones versus some random bum. All right, and I'll put it like this. Mike Machine Gun Jones killed this dude. I mean, he just absolutely destroyed him. Understand this, people. When you are boxing a guy who is taller than you or longer than you and has reach, you know what you do, right? If you're the shorter guy, you step in. You step into the, 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 the was it to the fighter. You, that's what you do. You stay inside so that he can't use that reach against you. What did this guy do? He tried to keep his distance from Jones, and then he's doing this. He puts his gloves down and starts doing this, trying to dodge punches. You know, look, I'll put it like this. When fighters put their gloves down and try to bobble weed to make fa to be faster, you don't usually dodge punches. But this guy, he didn't dodge any punches. Every time he tried to bob and weave like that, he was still getting hit. It, it was a joke, all right? The guy showed hard, but he lost com completely. He just lost. It was a joke. It was a joke. There was no reason why that guy should have been in the ring with Jones to begin with. But Jones is still your champion, all right? Philly Zone, still your champion. But let's get into the second round, all right? The second, uh, the second fight, all right? Now, Rodriguez, I want to talk about this. Because Rodriguez, it was, it was pretty much like the Jones fight, except, you know, same thing with the reach and, and the size advantage and the height. And I'll put it like this, all right? This guy that he fought did show some type of heart, and he did step in. He stepped in the fight. However, here's the problem. When Rodriguez realized that he couldn't swing anymore from his reach, he would do old school boxing. Y'all know how this is. You push the guy out the measure room, and then when he moves that glove, you punch him. That's what he was doing all day to this guy. So when we were talking, I'm thinking to myself, why doesn't the guy, when he's going for when he's going for the measurement, why doesn't he rotate to the right so that he can't get hit with that big right hand? But the guy never did. The guy showed hard, but he clearly lost. It was a joke. It was it, it came it came down to be a joke. I put like this. All the fights, I'm gonna talk about the third fight too, undercar fight. All the fights, every fight that night was very physical, very bloody. I put like this. Anybody who says that boxing is dead, you obviously missed a hell of a, a, a card lineup. You did. You really did. The third card was even was even worse. And I say this because, man, Rios just destroyed this guy. Destroyed this. I mean, this guy's eye was sitting out the hair. He was bleeding all over the place. It was a great fight, you know, start off. But then you started to see the guy start to teeter off due to the fact that he couldn't keep up when it came to combos. That's what it came down to. Stamina, footwork, and combos, he couldn't keep up. Rios was beating the hell out of him. And he had to stop the fight within, I want to say, the 10th, 11th round, something like that. All right? Because he couldn't see. He was being controlled. And I'm sitting there. I'm telling him, I'm like, yo, they need to stop this fight earlier. This guy is not fighting because he's being controlled. He can't see. All right, so Rio's pretty much dictated from like rounds like six, to, you know, six and forward. It was it was ridiculous. It was crazy. All right, they should have stopped the fight earlier, but they didn't. Now I'll say this. All right, because of the fact that that he controlled the fight and that it, it should have ended earlier, I'm thinking, okay, if they're going to let guys go that far into the fight with that with their eye like that, then I pull his Margarito Cotto. It should have went longer, but. Let's get into that because earlier that day, I had told you guys I'm picking Cotto due to the fact that his stamina and footwork, I went into great detail about it. Did I not say he's going to have to outbox him? He can't stand in one spot and bang with Margarito because he will lose that fight. He will. He has to outbox him. You have to watch his left and you have to and pretty much work on that eye. Now, for those who don't know what I'm talking about, if anyone watched the 24 7, Margarito had eye problems after he fought Pacquiao, okay? And for also those who don't know, he was also hospitalized after the fight. But. You know, the 24-7 was great due to the fact that Margarito, he plays this perfect supervillain. He does. He knows how he knows how to play this up, all right? And it was pretty much, fuck you. Fuck, you know, he just fucked everyone. His wife and everything. It was like, yeah, man, because his wife was pissed off that he thought he was using those hand wraps, all right? Those, 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 what was it? Those, those casts or whatever. So it, it was just crazy. But he got okay to go fight. And, you know, even the New York, uh, was it, State Commission was like, why is this dude still fighting? Why is he still fighting? You know, but whatever. That's not the point. So... Anyways, the fight came, and I had said this was going to happen. Did I not, guys? And Cotto picked him apart boxing-wise. Now, the times, especially in the fourth round, when Cotto decided, you know, he wanted to stay in Banglet, uh, was it Margarito? Surprisingly, he kind of got out of it, but he did get hurt at times. 
If you was watching, because that's that's Margarito's fight. He'll stalk you, he will get you in the corner, and he will beat on you. That's what he does. He's the bigger fighter. Cotto did the right thing by still boxing. It's pretty much stick and move. That's what he was doing. And that's what I said. And I was talking to JR about this because he was like, who you got? And I told him in detail what was going to happen, all right? Now, guys, I know the fight ended, and y'all, and a lot of you guys were like, yo, how'd you know that was going to happen? How'd you know it was going to happen? <laughs> and I'm like, do, do I really need to answer this question anymore? Come on, man. You know when you you know what you get when you come to me. You know what you're getting, all right? But it was just crazy. And even JR was like, how the fuck this dude know? Like, like it was just crazy, you know? And he was like, they're going to stop the fight. Before the fight ended, he said like, he's going to stop the fight. And I was like, well, you know, the undercard match, they didn't stop the fight that, you know, that short. But we'll see what happens. He's like, and he's like, well, you know, uh, what was it? I don't mean now. That's what he said to me. I don't mean now. And I'm like, well, you didn't say when either. So, <laughs> you know what I mean? So, they, they did stop the fight. But, seriously, Margarito could have kept going if he wanted to. Like I said, this is the second time now that Margarito has lost since he's come back. The first one against Pacquiao when she was hospitalized, and now this fight. Margarito, you need to stop. I understand you have pride. I understand that you, you feel you can still fight, but you've lost your, your two fights coming, you know, coming back from being suspended. It's over. It's over. And now they're talking about the winner of this is going to fight Floyd Mayweather. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. All right. We were told not too long ago that Floyd and Pac was going to do this. Uh, was it next year? So you telling me there's going to be two fights with Floyd next year or somebody lying? Now I got to question it. All right. Because now they're saying Cotto will match up against, you know, Floyd Mayweather. I, I don't know. Now, I don't think there's anything written in stone, but this is what the commentators were saying during the pay-per-view. That's, that's what they were saying. All right, guys. And I need, I need to move on to more fighting news. I'm just saying this now. John Jones versus Mashida. I'm looking forward to it. You guys want to know who I think is going to win? I'm going to pick Jones right now due to the fact that he's so much more unorthodox and athletic. But I'll put it like this, and I, I want to say Mashida has a puncher's chance, but I'm not going to say a puncher's chance. I should say a, a kicker's chance due to the fact that if Mashida gets a, one good kick on that dude in his face, it's over. It's over, all right? Mashida is, no, it's over, all right? But I'm still going to go with John Jones right now due to the fact of just overall athleticism. That's all I'm going to do right now, all right? Now, I need to move on. For those who did not see yesterday, that's why I didn't do the video yesterday, Liverpool versus Fulham. Now, look, this game was great. This was a great game. Uh, uh, was it other than a couple flops here and there? Yeah, all right? But trust me, you don't even want to get me and, you know, start with it. But in the beginning, all right, Fulham, was it? No, I'm sorry, not Fulham. Liverpool, all right? They had a lot of, try, they had a lot of tries at the goal in the beginning. They kicked one that should have went in on the right post, and it bounced off and came back, all right? And then later, was it in the second half, they had another one. They kicked it at the left post, and it bounced back, all right? Fulham scored, and it was it. They kicked one also that hit the crossbar at the top and bounced off. It was, it was, it was a crazy game. It really was. It was a great game. The crowd, the, the energy, I swear, the energy is just crazy when it comes to was it English Premier Soccer. I love watching it. And I want to talk about this due to the fact that I had the chance to watch the Euro draw. And when I watched it, I noticed that when they drew France's name, who, the, the dude who drew France's name was just like, France. And was real mad. I'm like, yo, why is everyone so mad at France? Maybe some of you guys can explain it to me, but that dude was mad. I'm like, yo, he's catching feelings over drawing France's name. Maybe it was just a bracket or something, but he was mad. He was clearly mad, guys. Oh, my God. Now, let's get on to this, all right? We need to talk about the other football news, Philadelphia Eagles. All right, guys, look. Look. Thursday was piss poor. All right, and I'm not I'm not going to harp too much on the game. We all know wide receiver 10. There's no way you could have not seen that when he quit on that one play when Vince Young was looking for him. All right, that's right, the one that he didn't look back for, and he decided he wants to jog and carry on and, and never turn around. Yeah, I told you before, he is checked out. He's done here. All right, and then the people say, well, you can't blame him because he's not getting paid. No, look, let's get something straight because I keep seeing this, and I'm telling you now, you guys in the media, we're, Dave Murphy, shut up. Shut up. I say this due to the fact, because for those who didn't see him, he says they need to give him his money. They need to give him his money so he'll be happy and keep this marriage. No, that's not what happens. If you want a new contract, you play hard for it. I'm not trying to hear you hold out. I'm not trying to hear that all of a sudden you've overplayed your contract, outplayed your contract. That doesn't, no, that doesn't fly. If you get hired by a company and you know the contract and you perform well and all of a sudden you feel that you're, you know, overperforming your contract, are you going to tell me all of a sudden you're just going to drop what you're doing? You're just going to stop, you know, working? No, you'd get fired. Don't give me this crap all of a sudden that, you know, you can do these type of things. If you're a man, you know what you were getting yourself into, you honor your contract and you play hard till the end. That's what you do. But people seeing these days don't, don't understand what that means. It's a joke. It's a, you know what, but 
Let's keep going. Because of the fact that wide receiver 10, yeah, everyone's like, well, what's going on? For those who don't know what came out, Fox had reported, all the news were actually reported it, you know, that this guy was, he was, his mindset was more on his birthday than anything. And for those who have not seen the promo for the strip club for the birthday thing, yeah, link is in the info bar for you guys. This is a joke. This is, I told you, you wants to be Hollywood. You want the spotlight. You want the cameras on you. Well, now you got them. All right? You have to understand that. This is, the, this is horrible. And then, like I said, the team plays horrible. Vince Young. <sighs> Vince Young comes out after that game, after four, throwing four interceptions. That's right. Four interceptions. Of course, I understand the one wasn't his fault. Riley Cooper came off his hands. I understand that. All right? Four interceptions. He comes out and says, I played okay. I played okay. <laughs> What? You didn't play okay. You played like shit. You got outplayed. You really did. The defense just manhandled you. And I want to talk about this a little bit more because Tap came out and started talking trash to Seattle. So did Jason Babin. And I'll talk about Jason Babin in a little bit. Yeah. All right. And he was talking trash about Seattle and their fans. You don't look. When you're four and seven at the time, now that we're four and eight, yeah, you don't start talking trash. Where the hell do you get this from? You have no room to talk, especially when the team that you're playing is just as bad as you. In record wise, well, not anymore because now they're better than you. This makes no sense. For those also didn't know, you know, during up to that week, Casey Matthews comes out and calls out the fans. God, fuck, man! Don't you people know when to shut your mouth? Don't you know? Casey Matthews come out. Link is in the info bar. Casey Matthews comes out and says that the fans don't know him. They don't know what he can do. They need to learn to, you know, get to know him first before they can judge him. Hold on, Casey Matthews. Hold on, rookie. Understand, we don't have to know you yet, all right? You have to know us. That's how this goes. This is, I'll tell you now, this is how this city works. If you cannot handle it, then leave. I'm not trying to hear what you want, you know, a pat on the back when you're playing like shit. But, I mean, last time you played, Casey, what happened? You're on the bench now, right? You've been benched anyway. So you might as well buy a ticket and, and sit in the stands with the rest of us. It makes no sense. All right? Don't sit here and tell me that we need to get to know you first. This is a bunch of bullshit. No, we don't care if you're going to be 4-7. or seven. Now, if you play well, that's a whole different story. But you knew you were undersized. You knew it was too much of a task for you to do what you were doing in the beginning of the year. That's why you were benched. All right? There was plenty of plays and times that you had and opportunities that you had to, you know, the, the, uh, you know, to capitalize on. But guess what? You blew them. So guess what? You sit on the bench. You had your opportunities. And I'm not trying to hear wait till next year for Casey Matthews. I'm not trying to hear it. All right? Jason Babbitt. Man, Jason Babbitt comes out after they lose. All right? I got, I got to talk about this. Comes out after they lose and starts getting at the media. Pretty interesting. Now, I won't say just the media. He's talking about bloggers. All right? Because he's saying he's reading these articles on his Twitter. And you guys sent it to me because I don't follow him. All right? Y'all was like, yo, did you hear what Jason Babbitt said? And what did I say to you? I don't support trash. That simple. I don't support trash. He comes out and says, and check this out, comes out and says that, you know, these bloggers, they have no idea. They're not in the locker room blowing it up. And, you know, most of these guys live in their mother's basement. Yeah, that's where he went. That's exactly where he went. Oh, come on, man. So what do you say to the guys who have played this game or are actively playing this game and they have something against you? Because that's what it was. You know, all this stuff was against them. So now he's got to get defensive. This is, a, this is horrible. What do you say to the guys who still play or did play? Do you say they're, they're still living in their mother's basement too? See, this is why your logic, this is why you just need to shut the fuck up. These people, these fucking players, get rid of them. Get rid of them. And everyone's going to say, oh, but he's got 11 sacks. I don't care. I don't care. All right? They tried to say that the entire time on Thursday. Oh, well, he's got 11 sacks. He's going to get, you know, a, a Pro Bowl nod. Look, understand that individual efforts do not mean anything when your team is 4-8. and eight. It doesn't mean anything, especially when you're playing off of Trent Cole. Because Trent Cole doing all damn work. All you're doing is speed rushing. And should we talk about the running game in that game? Because all the big ones came off of your side. Don't get me started, all right? Jason Babin, every time you turn around, you cannot do anything without Trent Cole. That's what it comes down to. Trent Cole is the lifeblood of that, uh, was that, that defensive line. Don't give me, don't, seriously, don't get me started. But let's keep going because the media, that's right. After that night, the media, I, I told some of you guys, I had to take some people down in the media, all right, on CSN. Amy Fadul comes out and says that, you know, because Cheney came out and said that, you know, we all played hard. I didn't see no, you know, lack of effort. You know, everyone was all in, which we know is bullshit. Even Andy Reid came out and said, you know, everyone was all in. Wide receiver 10 was all in. And it's like, look, I understand that the team is going to back each other and the coach is going to back the players, but that's the problem today. All right? That is the problem. No one's being held responsible. Everyone likes to say, it's not the coaches, it's the players, but they won't name names. Then the coaches say, well, it's our fault, but then you say, don't jump on the coach. This, Come on, man. It's a carousel of excuses, and nobody's taking responsibility. Nobody's naming, no one's stepping up in that locker room and saying, hey, you made us look bad this week. You got to cut that out. 
That's right. But I'll talk more about that because Amy Fadul says, you know, you know, no one, you know, didn't, you know, they, they all tried. No one had a lack of effort. And Amy Fadul said, you know, he's right. He's right. It's the truth. He's right. I said, that's bullshit. I said, did we not just see what happened that game? There was a lot of non-effort going on in that game. Don't sit here and lie to people. And this is what I mean about the ass-kissing media, all right? And then me and her get into it for about a good half hour, we debate. She took pros, I took cons, and I fucking destroyed her. And at the, at the end of it, she ended up agreeing with me. She ended up agreeing with me. Because I said, there's, we have no room for arrogant players. And she was like, there's no arrogant players on this team. And I'm like, are you serious? I'm like, so I just imagine Kelsey and Mathis threatening fans. Avant coming out and calling people out. Matthews calling people out. Babbin calling fans out. I mean, don't sit here and tell me that there's no arrogant players on this team all right I'm not trying to hear that and she says well there are a few bad eggs on the team but we hope that we get they get it together no that's not what it comes down to I said somebody needs to go in that locker room and tell it how it is and she said well throwing players under the bus isn't the way to do things that's not really leadership I said no you have to make people responsible if you win as a team you fall as a team and if somebody acts up then guess what you have to be responsible as a team it's not just an individual person what don't you understand that they play for bigger causes they play, it's not just we win and that's it. No, they play for an ideal. That's what it means to be a team. This is what the media doesn't understand. And it, it, you know what, it pisses me off so much. And I got on her, I said, and I said to her, I said, so let me get this straight. If someone threatens you physically, would you say all of a sudden it's okay because, you know, they won on Sunday? No. I said, if, you, I said, if that's the case, then you have some very low self-esteem. And she was like, no, no, you're absolutely right. You know, and like I said, she was backtracking the whole time. She might as well fucking moonwalked in there. I mean, seriously, that's how much she was backtracking. It's crazy, all right? But like I said, I've destroyed every person when it comes to CSN media. Like I said, I knocked out Marshall Harris. Now I knocked out Amy Fadul. Who else you got left? You want to bring Lisa Hillary over here so I can, so I can sun the shit out of her? Was it on the flyers? Come on, man. Don't get me started with this. CSN, at this point, you're lucky you're not bringing me into the studio because a lot of people would be fired. They, seriously, I would out-debate each and every one of them. Every one of them. It's a joke. And the thing is, they're not calling it on the players because every Monday, Jason Babbin's on there. Once I, once I see Jason Babbin, I'm like, click. I don't even watch it, all right? I don't even watch it. But they already tell you ahead of time that they're going to be nice to him. What's the point? What's the point? If he plays like shit, what's the point? I'm not trying to hear it. Why are you being nice to these guys when they're acting like assholes to everyone else? It, it, <sighs> these athletes are not superstars. They are not celebrities. Remember when there was a time where you respected what they did on the field. Remember that time, and that's, that's when they earned their respect. It wasn't just, oh, they're here to play for us, now we have to praise them. Where did that come from all of a sudden? That's a joke. Like I said, as a person, as a human being, you should never let anyone disrespect you just because they feel, you know, they play professional football or professional baseball or whatever profession. That's bullshit. They're a man just like you and me and they bleed the same. This makes no sense. That's some reality for your asses. See, this is the difference between somebody who actually lives life and someone who's had it soft. And I say that because all you CSA anchors, all right, you've had it soft. That's not being professional. You've had it soft. And speaking of soft, wide receiver 10, for those didn't see, all right, the post-game post interview, he gets mad and starts going off on reporters. And I understand, look, I have no problem with that. That's not what I have a problem with, all right? He said how you felt, tell him how you feel. I don't have a problem with that, all right? But what I do have a problem with is every time you win a game, you quick to say, interview me, interview me, interview me, come on, please, please, please. And then when you lose, you don't want to talk to nobody. That's, that's not how the profession works. You have to talk to people whether you win or lose. Now, we've been seeing this week after week, you've been, you've been kind of humble. All right, and saying, you know, look, I'm just frustrated, or whatever. But Monday, psst, I ain't got nothing to do with the question. Psst, I'm not talking to you. Grabs his, back, his backpack and leaves. Link is in the info bar for that. Also, about this whole players back and players and no one, you know, uh, was it no one had lack of effort? Well, there's a link in the info bar also for you guys where an unnamed eagle, which pisses me off because it's unnamed, that's right, comes out and says, well, I receive a 10, didn't play good didn't play well at all and it was a joke and it was embarrassed. I'm telling you, the links are in the info bar for you. Eagles fans, I understand the passion. You have every right to be mad, but don't say I didn't tell you. That's what this comes down to. As far as I'm concerned, we've got four games left. They're talking about Vic starting with Miami, which makes no sense to me. As far as I'm concerned, shut it down. The only time I want to see Vic play at, at this point for the rest of the season is against the Cowboys and against, uh, was it, and against the uh, Jets. Only two. All right, everything else, you warm up Kafka. Warm him up. Let's see if the kid can play. 
Seriously, this is the only way you're going to find out if he's even worthy of being a legit backup. Now, understand, I'm saying this because a lot of these dudes, they're going to leave. They're already talking about Vince Young is gone. They're already saying it. Five million dollars for this. Get the fuck out of here. Get out. All right. But guys, understand that this is going to get worse. And I'm telling you, you know, we have to look forward to the draft. Let some of these players go, whether you have to trade them, waive them, whatever. All right. And start looking. There's already talks of drafting a quarterback. Now, look, I understand you want to draft a quarterback. I understand this. But also understand that we need some serious linebackers. We need, I mean, oh God. And I understand also, if you look at all the moves that we had made when we got Kolb and then throughout, understand that we got screwed at one point in draft picks because Andy Reid was, you know, he wanted certain players. So that hurt us too. You have to understand, guys, that this is bigger than just what's going on from week to week. This is about planning for the future. And some of these dudes are saying that Andy Reid don't need to go. Look, when you are not a competent coach, and I'm not just talking about the play call, but when you let the locker room get away from you, it's done. It's over. And for those who don't understand what I'm talking about, we saw this with Mike Singletary. He made sure his locker room, when he played, when he, uh, was it, with the 49ers, since they're doing so well. Yes, that is Singletary's team, all right, being taken over by someone else. He put that mentality out there that he wasn't taking anything. Remember when he told Vernon Davis, go into the back. You're acting like a fool going to the back during the middle of the game. And then what happened this week was in Tampa Bay. Coach told his, uh, was it the player after the, was it the, the personal, mis was the misconduct or whatever? The personal, the un the, I'm sorry, the, the un was it, damn, what did he get? What that penalty, what's that penalty? Come on, uh, player, un uh, un uh, unsportsmanlike conduct. Yeah, that's what he got, the player. And what did the coach do? He didn't just send him into the back. He sent them home. That's what I'm talking about. That's what coaches do. I'm not trying to hear this. And everyone can say, well, you say he's a it reads a player's coach. That that's not the point. The point is he's too soft on him. He is. It's just that's what it is. And let's say you lose control of that locker room, it's over. All right? I've never seen it. Let's say we said I've said it before, I'll say it again. I've never seen this from the Philadelphia Eagles. They're playing like divas, they aren't playing with any heart. And I've said before, if any Eagles player has a problem with what I'm saying, then take my challenge. Take my challenge. I don't know how many times I can say that. So it's not like I'm scared of any of you. Man, anyways, I want to move on for those who saw during the halftime of the Eagles game. Donovan McNabb comes out, you know, he's a free agent now. I know some of you are saying that McNabb should come back as a backup or whatever. No, no. The guy doesn't have any fire. He just doesn't. If you watch the interview, it was just, oh, I got to go through free agency. Are you serious? I got to go. Every time he turns around, he talks what happens. I would like to see McNabb mad for once. Just mad. There's no fire. There's no... You can see it. There's no desire in him to play anymore. Every when you watch the Minnesota games, when he was getting sacked, he's smiling. Like, yo, dude, you, they just sacked you for a safety and you smiling. What's wrong with you? I, I don't get this. And they're talking. He wants to go to Chicago, but I don't think Chicago wants anything to do with him. Now they're talking. Brett Favre comes out talking about if Chicago uh, wants to send, you know, maybe give me a contract. I'll listen to him. Maybe I'll play for him. Stop Brett Favre. Sit the fuck down. I am so tired of this. This Tim Tebow thing. My God. Look. I understand Tim Tebow's winning games. Congratulations, Tim Tebow. But your fans are fucking nuts. And I showed y'all last week about the fact, you know, about the, all the tattoos and all. Well, now we had some writer come out. And, you know, I, I wouldn't even take it seriously. But he actually tries to make a legit point that Tim Tebow is the next Jesus. No bullshit. All right? Instead of calling him a quarterback, he was calling him a Christer back. This is, this is a joke, man. Look, until Tim Tebow, if he's the next Jesus, until he starts walking on water and stopping diseases and not playing football, I'm not trying to hear it. This is... Guys, oh my God, I'm telling you guys, it, it's getting worse every week. But you know what? I am happy to see some players shine. Cam Newton, he's now he's catching passes. He's not even throwing them anymore. He's catching passes. I mean, it, the New Orleans States played a great game. It's like I said, all these games that happened, the Giants and Green Bay Packers, I asked you guys when it was a pretty much a shootout. And I said to you guys, what did I say? I said, is this more of overpowered offenses, high-powered offenses, or is this just piss-poor defenses for this week? And you guys said, both. <laughs> you know I mean? And the thing is, I have to start suspecting Green Bay. I understand they're on a streak or whatever, but this isn't the first time we've seen them give up a ton of points. If you notice, in both Chargers games this year, they gave up tons of points, and now they gave up a ton of points to the Giants. Now we know, uh, was it Dallas and I think the Giants, they play each other this week coming up, and people are like, well, we have a chance still for the playoffs. No, we don't. Eagles fans, I understand you want hope. It's over. It's over. 4-8, and eight, it's over. I'm not trying to hear it. I'm not. Like I said, Vic will start, which I'm, I'm not happy about. You should let Kafka play Miami. Vic play the Jets. Vic play Dallas. And then when we play the Redskins, you let Kafka play the Redskins. But they're not going to do that. They're going to let Vic ride this out. As, and he said he's not even 100%, but he's still going to play. He's not 100%. 
Oh my God. Uh, you know what? At, at this point, understand that people are hard on Vic, and I understand why. Like I've said before, this is not just about his injuries. Yes, that offensive line is bad. But understand that Vic has not played well all season. You give him till next season. And I say this, next season. If he keeps this up next season, you get rid of his ass. As far as I'm concerned. Yes, I said it. I said it. Because there's no way you can sit here and keep looking and see the blitz coming and not adjust or not audible. There's no way that you cannot check down and hit receivers. There's no way that you can, st you're pretty much staring at a primary receiver and you're tipping off the, the, the secondary just like, and I'll like this because I'm being fair because I said the same thing about Kevin Cole last season when he was staring at people. So don't act like all of a sudden I'm on Vic's, you know, I'm just bagging on Vic. All right? I'm being fair. Understand that he has done a lot wrong. I don't know if he's not watching the tape or he's just got this confidence that he, he can just try to force the ball. You can't do that. You just can't. He's not playing well. And Stephen A. Smith comes out today and says, Vic's playing well this season. No the hell he's not. I don't know what you guys are seeing in the mainstream media, but he is not. I don't understand this. But whatever. Anyways, guys, I want to move on. I, as you can see, I'm very frustrated at the NBA. However, I mean the NBA at NFL. We are going to move on to the NBA right now. As I'm, I'm telling you, I'm looking forward to the Sixers. I really am. Evan Turner comes out and says he cannot wait to get on the court. Young man, you better back up what you're saying. You really should. You play like shit. Was it the whole season? And then when we got, was it later in the season to the playoffs? You had some opportunities. I'll give you that. All right? But don't sit here and talk about how you can't wait and you're ready and you're prepared. And then you stink up the joint. I'm not trying to hear it. I understand you've been working on your shooting since you went back. To, was it the college? Yeah, the college coaches helping you, and which is weird because you're a professional and you have college coaches helping you instead of the actual professionals helping you. You know the, the NBA professionals, but whatever, whatever. All right. Fact is, Sixers fans, I don't know what's going on. I see all these teams all of a sudden start to build these big conferences. Chris Paul wants to go to New York. It has been said today that the Lakers are willing to trade their entire team. That's right, their entire team other than Kobe Bryant to get Dwight Howard and Chris Paul. This is, look, if we're going to play this big three for every city, it's almost like playing NBA Jam. It really is. You can pick out three guys. You don't get to pick two out of three guys at a time, but you get to pick out three guys that represent your team. That's what this is. If that's the case, then Philly, I demand you start getting some bigger superstars. Andre Iguodala, I swear, if you decide you don't show up this season, I'm going to be pissed off. All right? I'm not trying to hear five po averaging four or five points a game. Uh, oh, but he plays good defense. I'm not trying to hear that. You're a forward. You're a scoring forward. You're an athletic forward. All you can do right now is run the floor and dunk the ball. That's what you do. You better show up. And you better play like this. If Evan Turner has a better shooting season than you, then maybe you should have went down with Evan Turner and go practice. This is, man, I'm telling you. you know, I'll, I'll play like this. This team, the Sixers, as far as I'm concerned, I haven't even seen a playoff game yet. I mean a playoff game, a preseason game yet, which starts very soon apparently. Was it the 15th or 16th or something like that? But anyways, I'm banking on Drew Holiday and Lou Williams to carry this team as far as I'm concerned. Elton Brand, we don't know what's going to happen with him yet. I, I'm just putting it like that. We don't know. He's a big question mark right now. And this rookie that we got is a big question mark. So we'll see what happens, all right? Guys, uh, it's been a long weekend. It's been a, it, was a, it was a bullshit weekend. Other than the sports, it was a bullshit weekend. Like I said, I'm getting ready to go play. What time is it? Yeah, okay, yeah. I'm getting ready to go play. I'm going to try to listen. I'm gonna try to upload this beforehand. Also, I want to let you guys know, just a small update. When I told you guys I was doing a documentary, right? Well, I showed the intro. The intro's done, all right? I showed it on the Facebook page, and I showed it on the Twitter. But for those who did not see it, all right, that they don't follow me on there and still watch the show, I'm going to put it in info bar for you guys. I'm going to tell you, I, I, like I said, I mean business. I'm not playing around. And all you Philly fans, all you little, what was it, all you little Philly YouTubers that have more fans than me, it's been established here, and you're talking Philly sports, and you act like you're so pro, let me tell you something, all right? If you're so good, why are you not pulling these type of moves that I'm pulling? Why are you not trying to help out the city if you love Philly so fucking, Philly sports so fucking much? Why are you not going down to bad neighborhoods and actually trying to get these sports revitalized? You know how many people I had just last week come up to me on the street that I don't know, on the street, and tell me, you know, hey man, you know, Logan, they, they need more baseball players, more black, you know, more inner city black baseball players. And I'm like, okay, I understand it because they have them down in Port Richmond, they have them on Tioga, shouts to Tioga, that's right, all right? They have them every, you know, in other places, but not all over the city. Tabor said the same thing to me. Like this, I'm telling you guys, there's a lot of moves to be made here. And when I hear the mayor sit around and talk all this shit, yeah, talk all this shit about citizens in Carolina, he's not doing anything. What was it when you guys were following me last week on Twitter when that Occupy Philly thing went down? I was there. I was there when it happened. 
That's right. It was horrible. All right. And the Occupy, uh, Occupy Philly people were saying how the mayor has changed his, you know, his tone towards us since he got reelected. Well, no shit, because he did the other reelection, too. He doesn't care. He kissed your ass until he got reelected. And now he doesn't care. It's been like this time and time again. None of these guys are doing anything. All they do, if you read their Twitters, all they do is kiss each other's asses. All right. Oh, we're going to change the future. Oh, we're going to do this. You're not doing anything. And the thing is, when they wanted those people to move at Occupy Philly so they can build this big ice rink, because that's what's going to put in the middle of the city hall. They're trying to make it look like Rockefeller Center, all right? They, the, was it the SEPTA? Was it the SEPTA Underground Park's going to get remodeled, and they want to put an ice rink in front of city hall. Understand this. For as much as that project is costing millions and millions and millions of dollars, instead of building, up, building it in one place, you could have divided that money and put them in other places around Center City. But they don't care about the rest of the city other than Center City. That's the problem. Anyways, guys, I'll talk to y'all later. Y'all be safe. Hopefully, you enjoy the intro. Talk to y'all later. I'm out.